was in public school, we had things called school readers, and they would take excerpts from uh, larger books and put them in as shorter pieces. And one of the pieces that I read in the school reader in probably about grade six was Susanna Moody's house burning down in the middle of winter. Forgot about it really for quite a long time. When I was in graduate school uh, at Harvard and I had a dream that I had written an opera about Susanna Moody of all people in which there was only one person, namely her. And <laughs> I woke up and I thought this was so singular that I went off to the library and in it were Roughing It in the Bush and Life in the Clearing. So I read them and then I started writing these poems. I didn't read them with the idea of writing the poems. I just, I read them because of the opera dream then I started writing the poems, and that would be about 1964 or 5. And I had written most of them uh, quite quickly at that time, and I wrote a few more later. That brings us to about 1967, 8, 9. And by that time, uh, Charles Pactor had already uh, illustrated a number of my other poems. I think he did five limited edition books by that time. So when we were thinking of uh, putting out the book as a book of poems, it was actually Bill Toy who mm -hmm. said, why don't you have some illustrations? So I gave the poems to Charlie and he got very stuck into it. Excited. After we had crossed the long illness that was the ocean, we sailed upriver. On the first island, the immigrants threw off their clothes and danced like sand flies. We left behind, one by one, the cities rotting with cholera, one by one our civilized distinctions, and entered a large darkness. It was our own ignorance we entered. I have not come out yet. My brain gropes nervous tentacles in the night, sends out fears hairy as bears, demands lamps, or waiting for my shadowy husband, hears malice in the trees whispers. I need wolf's eyes to see the truth. I refuse to look in a mirror. Whether the wilderness is real or not, depends on who lives there. When she finally sent me the manuscript to the journals of Susanna Moody, she was in Boston and I was in Montreal at Expo, and I knew the minute I saw it that it was a, a brilliant piece of work. And I set to um, doing collages and uh, cut up pieces of silk screen and looking at the whole psychological impact of the suffering of the pioneers and what it was like living in 19th century uh, rural Canada. I don't know why it appealed so much to me. It goes back to maybe my own unknown um, uh, knowledge of my poor immigrant grandparents. My grandmother came to Alberta in 1914 from some little small town in Russia. But as the grandchild of immigrants, I really related to it. And some of the images, there's one of the woman in the forest holding the baby was based on an old uh, photograph that I had of my grandmother. To fast forward a little, it was the mid 70s, late, eight, uh, late 70s when I was renovating old buildings on Queen Street West and I ended up with enough equity in these buildings to borrow money to bring these two printers from Spain, Manuel and Abel Bello Sanchez, who had done work for Salvador Dali and the Delaunays, and they were really the classic European artist printers. They had me in their sway. I had to work daily, constantly, according to a schedule that would make it possible to get everything completed within a certain time frame. And um, it turned out that it worked out really well because we were working in tandem. While they were printing and stacking each finished proof, uh, I was busy at the silk screen right next to them, working away on the next image. They would say, okay, we're ready for page 17 and you've got to be uh, prepared to get, get us that image ready. And so 
we were constantly working uh, with each other that way. And lo and behold, nine months later, we came up with thir over 13,000 separate printed impressions that made up the final edition of 120 copies. I'll never forget when the book was finished, and I think you called Jack McClelland and told him about this, and we said it was $6,000 a book, and he couldn't believe it. He said, what? Mm -hmm. And then he came and saw it, and he ended up buying three. <laughs> Do you remember? He bought one for Pierre Burton, and I can't remember who the other one was for, but um, there was a lot of excitement about the book when it came out in 1980. And um, my, I think the most touching comment about it was from Jay McPherson, a wonderful poet and professor at Victoria College, who in a letter said that having seen them together, she now felt that one without the other was wanting, that it was a marriage. And that was the greatest compliment I could have ever received because I wanted to pay homage to the poems. It would take more than that to banish me. This is my kingdom still. Turn, look up through the gritty window an unexplored wilderness of wires. Though they buried me in monuments of concrete slabs of cables, though they mounded a pyramid of cold light over my head, though they said, we will build silver paradise with a bulldozer, it shows how little they know about vanishing. I have my ways of getting through. Right now, the snow is no more familiar to you than it was to me. This is my doing. The gray air, the roar going on behind it are no more familiar. I am the old woman sitting across from you on the bus, her shoulders drawn up like a shawl. Out of her eyes come secret hat pins destroying the walls, the ceiling. Turn, look down, there is no city. This is the center of a forest. Your place is empty. You know, I never thought I'd see the day while I was actually alive that my work would be at the McMichael Gallery of Canadian Art. I'm really touched that they've made the decision to do this because I truly believe it's a, uh, Ah, it's, uh, the book centers around the archetypal Canadian experience, the immigrant in all of us, the hardships of adapting to a new land, and it will help the kids of the 21st century to get some sense of the incredible hardship that was suffered by the first pioneers. It truly is the complete Canadian beginning experience that almost everybody can share at some level. Mm -hmm.